Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à Coffee Break French. Welcome once again to Coffee Break French. Now it's lesson 20 and in this lesson we'll be reviewing much of the vocabulary that we've covered recently in our lessons. And we'll be doing so within the context of a conversation which takes place in a restaurant. And I hope you find this lesson useful. So as I said, today's lesson is going to begin with a conversation, a dialogue, bringing together lots of what we've covered in the past few weeks. Pierre Benoit, you are going to play the part of the waiter or the person in the restaurant. D'accord. Okay. And Anna, you and I are going to have some lunch. I'm looking forward to it. Now, when you're listening to this conversation, there might be some things that you don't recognise, but in a sense, that's exactly the situation that you would experience if you were experiencing the language for real in France or indeed any other French-speaking country. So don't worry too much, you will definitely get the idea. Now, the conversation is going to be in several parts, from when we arrive at the restaurant right through to asking for the bill. But to begin with, we'll hear the entire conversation from beginning to end. So we are arriving at the restaurant. Bonjour, vous êtes combien? C'est pour deux personnes. D'accord, suivez-moi s'il vous plaît. Merci. Voici la carte. Voulez-vous boire quelque chose? Pour moi, une limonade. Euh, je prends un verre de vin rouge s'il vous plaît. Alors, une limonade pour madame et un verre de vin rouge pour monsieur. C'est parti! Voilà, une limonade. Merci. Et un vin rouge. Merci. Vous avez choisi Oui, je prends l'escalope de dinde. Et moi, je prends un steak frites. Euh, steak frites, oui, et la cuisson Bien cuit, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Ça a été Oui, c'était vraiment délicieux. Je voudrais bien un café. Et pour moi, un allongé. Très bien. Vous nous apportez l'addition, s'il vous plaît. Bien sûr, tout de suite, monsieur. So, did you understand all of that? Hopefully you did. Let's go back through each section of it in turn. To begin with, we arrived at the restaurant and we were greeted by the waiter, otherwise known as Pierre Menoir. He said... Bonjour, vous êtes combien now, vous êtes combien? That's not something we've done. But we have done, c'est pour combien de personnes? And it means the same thing. Literally, you are how many? So how many people is it for? Vous êtes combien? Vous êtes combien? Now, Anna, you answered that by saying... C'est pour deux personnes. C'est pour deux personnes. So it's for... Two people. Exactly. And Pierre Benoit continued by saying, Suivez-moi, s'il vous plaît. You know what that means already. Suivez-moi. Anna? Follow me. Follow me, exactly. Okay, so we followed Pierre Benoit to our table and he then gave us something. He gave us la carte. And that is? The menu. Okay, so Pierre Benoit, can you give us the whole of that again, please? Voici la carte. Voulez-vous boire quelque chose? Okay, now, boire, we know what boire means. Anna, what does boire mean? To drink. And just while we're at it, can you remember what to eat is? Manger. Okay, so, voulez-vous boire quelque chose? Anna, what do you think that means? I think it means, would you like something to drink? Yeah, do you want to drink something? Voulez-vous boire quelque chose? Pierre can you give us that again, please? Voulez-vous boire quelque chose? And Anna, you replied with? Pour moi, une limonade. So Anna would like une limonade, a lemonade. And I said, je prends un verre de vin rouge, s'il vous plaît. So Anna, what would I like? You would like a glass of red wine. Okay, and Pierre Benoit simply repeats this order. Une limonade pour madame et un verre de vin rouge pour monsieur. C'est parti now, c'est parti is not something that we are familiar with. Can you maybe explain that for our listeners? I think in English you would say something like uh, straight away, right away. 
Yep, exactly. So Pierre Minois brings our drinks, and as he brings the drinks, he also asks us, Vous avez choisi? Vous avez choisi means? Have you chosen? Yeah, have you chosen? Have we looked at the menu and chosen our meals? And at that point, I say, Oui, je prends l'escalope de dinde. Now, Pierre Vinois, can you explain what une escalope de dinde would be? Well, dinde, first of all, is turkey. Une escalope would be um, a chop but without a bone. Merci beaucoup. Et Anna, you asked for something else. You had? A steak frite. A steak frite, which we all know uh, already. Uh, that's steak with chips. Um, there was another question that the waiter asked us at that point. It was? Et la cuisson? La cuisson. Do you remember what la cuisson is, Anna? Um, how well done would you like it? Yeah, the, 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 the preparation of it, the cooking of it. How well would you like it cooked? Anna, you asked for it? Bien cuit. Bien cuit. What were the other possibilities, Anna? Can you remember? Well, if you want it medium, you would say à point. Non, moi je préfère mon steak saignant. Uh, what does saignant mean, Anna? Rare. So when the meals come, when Pierre Benoit brings the meals, when he's putting them down on the table, he uses a word that we've come across, and that is... Voilà, messieurs, dames. Okay, so that voilà word, it means there you go, or here you are, or something like that. And the messieurs, dames... Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, even if there is just the one lady and one gentleman, yeah? What? Monsieur Dame. It's one of those uh, sort of generic words that is used quite often when there are people of both genders eating. And he obviously uh, wishes us bon appétit. Enjoy your meal. Exactly. Then in the final section, when he comes to, to take our plates away after we've eaten our, our meals, uh, the waiter asks... Saete? Saete means... Did you enjoy that? Yeah, and I say, oui, c'était vraiment délicieux. It was really delicious. Um, Anna, you then asked for something else. See again what you asked for and see if our listeners can work out. I said, je voudrais bien un café. Un café, which is, of course... A copy. Yeah, and I asked for un allongé. Et pour moi, un allongé. Pierre Benoit, what's un allongé? Allongé is a, is a coffee, but you add a, a tiny bit of water. To make it weaker, I suppose, in case the espresso is too strong. C'est cela, c'est cela. Okay, and I also asked for l'addition. Vous nous apportez l'addition, s'il vous plaît? Literally, would you bring us the bill, please? And Pierre Benoit said... Bien sûr, tout de suite, monsieur. So, of course, tout de suite. And breaking that up, it's tout de suite, tout de suite. It means immediately, straight away. Okay, it's time to listen to the whole conversation again. Bonjour, vous êtes combien? C'est pour deux personnes. D'accord, suivez-moi s'il vous plaît. Merci. Voici la carte. Voulez-vous boire quelque chose? Pour moi, une limonade. Euh, je prends un verre de vin rouge s'il vous plaît. Alors, une limonade pour madame et un verre de vin rouge pour monsieur. C'est parti! Voilà, une limonade. Merci. Et un vin rouge. Merci. Vous avez choisi Oui, je prends l'escalope de dinde. Et moi, je prends un steak frite. Euh, steak frite, oui, et la cuisson Bien cuit, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Ça a été Oui, c'était vraiment délicieux. Je voudrais bien un café. Et pour moi, un allongé. Très bien. Vous nous apportez l'addition, s'il vous plaît. Bien sûr, tout de suite, monsieur. So, hopefully, you understood all of that conversation. Indeed, if you've been listening to the episodes of Coffee Break French over the past few weeks, you'll know all the vocabulary that was covered in that. And more importantly, you'll be able to do the same if you're in France or indeed any other French-speaking part of the world and you are looking for something to eat. OK, it's time to move on, and we're going to take the opportunity of having Pierre Benoit here to talk a little about food in a more general sense, and specifically, la nourriture française. La nourriture, Anna, can you remember what la nourriture is? Um, it's food. 
Isn't it food? So la nourriture française would be? French food. Exactly. Alors, Pierre Benoît, tu aimes la nourriture française? Oui, j'adore la nourriture française parce que je suis très gourmand. Ah, tu es gourmand, gourmand. Anna, do you know what gourmand means? I don't know. I think it might mean something about liking food. Indeed, you like your food. Adieu, Marc. J'adore la nourriture. Alors, euh, quelles sont les spécialités françaises Alors, moi, j'aime beaucoup, par exemple, le cassoulet. Ok, le cassoulet. Ça vient d'où en France Du sud de la France. Euh, ça contient quoi euh, Des haricots. Ok, les haricots are Beans. Yep. Et euh, Des saucisses. Les saucisses, perhaps our listeners can guess that. Anna, can you guess what les saucisses are Saucisses. Ok, so les haricots, les saucisses et quoi d'autre euh, du porc et du bœuf, quelquefois. Ok, du porc, we've had that, because we were talking about je ne mange pas de porc. Porc, Anna Pork. Et bœuf Beef. Ok, so, du bœuf, du porc, des haricots. Des épices. Ah, des épices. Des épices. Now, that is a good example of a particular type of word. We've come across one or two before. In fact, écossais is one of these words. Épice is spelled e acute, P-I-C-E, or in the plural with an S on the end, obviously. Épice. And where you've got an e acute, or indeed sometimes an e circumflex, very often that means in the history of the word, the way the word has developed, there is an S that has disappeared. So if you take the word épice and add in an S, After the E acute, but before the P, you would get something like espice. And if you think about how that is spelled, Anna, what does epice mean? Um, space. So other examples might be things like hôpital, which we've come across. Hôpital has got a circumflex over the O, so there is an S missing. Obviously, hôpital is recognisable as hospital. École, E acute, C-O-L-E, is a school. So, école, escole, skull, and it's, you're beginning to recognize these words. Even things like forêt, la forêt, that's E circumflex T, and there's a missing S there, so it's... Forest? Tout à fait. Ok, Pierre, oui. une question. Oui. Est-ce que tu aimes les escargots? Mm, J'aime assez les escargots. Les escargots. Anna, do you remember what les escargots are? Um, yes, they are snails. Exactly. Alors, tu aimes assez les escargots. Oui, c'est trop gras. Gras, for our listeners, means? It's, it's uh, greasy. It's yeah, quite oily. Oily, yeah. yeah. Garlicky as well. Yeah, indeed. Garlic in French is? Aïe. Aïe. And that's spelled a i with two dots above it. It's called a tréma in French. If you're used to doing German, it would be an umlaut. But... A-I with two dots and an L. I. Excellent. Oui, I. Okay. Anything else uh, that's a particular French delicacy, une spécialité française? Mm, J'aime beaucoup comme entrée, I really like as a starter, la bouillabaisse. La bouillabaisse, c'est de quelle région de, de la France? Oh, c'est de la Provence, c'est la région de Marseille. Et c'est quoi? It's a fish soup. A fish soup. Euh, il y a aussi une soupe euh, écossaise de poisson aussi. Oui, qui s'appelle Colin Skink. J'adore ça. Alors, tu aimes la nourriture écossaise aussi Oui, comme je viens de dire, oui, j'adore euh, la soupe de poisson. Colin Skink. Oui. Et j'aime beaucoup le plat traditionnel. Qui est le haggis. Eh oui, le haggis. Now, we've got lots of international listeners, and I'm sure that most people know what haggis is, our Scottish dish that's so traditional. En français, c'est quoi? La panse de brebis farcie. So basically, it's a stuffed 
sheep's yeah. stomach. C'est correct, c'est bien. And it's absolutely delicious. C'est servi avec quoi Avec euh, des navets et de la purée de pommes de terre. Ok, Anna, euh, les navets, we have a Scottish word for them. What's, what's les navets in Scottish um, Neeps. Neeps, that's right, it's turnip, turnip. Uh, et les pommes de terre, we've got another Scottish word for that as well. Tatties. Tatties. Et puis, moi les tatties en anglais bah, et Potatoes Tout à fait, c'est ça. Les pommes de terre. Literally, the apples of earth. Les pommes de terre. Ok. Ah, ah. Oh. Avec un petit peu de whisky. Ah oui, tout à fait, tout à fait. <rire> un petit peu de whisky. Anna With a little bit of whisky. Absolutely. Our national dish. And that's where we're going to leave our discussions of la nourriture française et la nourriture écossaise. And that's where we're going to leave it today for this edition of Coffee Break French. Thanks for joining us and we hope it's been useful. You can join the Coffee Break French community on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffeebreakfrench and we're at Learn French on Twitter. Merci beaucoup et à bientôt. This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.